How's it going everyone? Sephir here and we are back and today I wanted to take a look at something that I see a lot of people asking about and that's going to be the territory cards. Uh, so if we go ahead and take a look here, this is from the open beta. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen a bit. I did do quite a bit of territory standing and I tested a few things. And as you can see, I'm level 41 territory standing with Windsward on the left side over here. And I have decent standing with a few other places that particularly we own. The beta was really fun. We held our territories the entire time and it was a blast. So, you know, these are the areas in which I kind of got cards in the most. And we do talk about some of the other areas that uh, will be in here. But basically, I just wanted to take a look at these cards and explain to you why you would get something why you would not want to get something and sort of the trap cards if you will uh that are kind of present that kind of fade off at 60 because remember you cannot respec these cards they're kind of permanent with you and the bonuses are kind of permanent so this is all going to be my own personal opinion so take that with a grain of salt as we are just going to be looking into things like what is best while leveling what is best in the end game and talk about like the reasons why you would want to make some of those choices and i feel like cards is a personal decision uh, this is up to you on based on how you want to play so i'm going to go ahead and break that down a bit uh, so first we'll go ahead and go to Windsward here and we'll talk about card choice types right it usually comes in a category and as you can see i have high percents in these two particular cards and I'll explain why I would want to take these versus why I would want to take something else. <clears throat> so, for me, um, we took Windsward first, and it was the first territory that we took. So I knew that I was going to be doing a lot of trading and crafting in Windsward. And so when you take one of these two cards, you have to think about, is this a city that you are going to be trading in? Is this a city you're going to be crafting in? Property tax is kind of a dead card. It, it it can be good. Property tax can be about 700 plus, maybe a bit. It saves you some gold in the long term. But if you're a player that's going to be using the auction house, you're probably going to want this as it's going to reduce that tax rate down based on what you lose from the AH and percentage cuts based on the territory. Uh, so this is a nice thing to get when you're buying and selling things from an auction house right so that that is going to be a good item to, or a good card to go for crafting fee is also nice that's going to cut down a little bit on the cost to make materials and this card property tax like i did say it was maybe not the best card but if you do plan to get like a tier like a tier four house or like a really high tier house right in that place the tax on that can be high, so getting this card could work out for you. A lot of these cards will start at 5% and then get like an additional scaling. So since this is the beta, I'm just going to go ahead and take this property tax card and maybe we'll see it cycle up again and so we can see what the second step on scaling is for that. Um, so again, it's going to come in these category of choices. And now here I have another choices. Uh, this is going to be more territory standing, which is just going to help me get more levels over here if you look on the left where wins where it is level 41 it's going to help me gain that um a thing about with levels is that every time you gain a territory level you actually gain experience uh so a lot of times people are doing corrupted breaches or rifts and they level up while they're um completing the rift so they think that they're getting more experience it's not from that it's from this and also if you turn into town board quests and all of a sudden you get like 3k experience that's why it's because you leveled up the territory uh, standing so this can be a decent card to get if you plan on committing a lot to an area because it will help you gain levels more quickly and these levels do go up as you can see um, on the left side over here this is 2100 out of 9300 roughly and some of the other territories like over here like i have wrestle shore only level two it only takes 600 territory standings to go up so it will keep getting higher and higher as time goes on so being able to get 25 percent more means that like let's say i were to reach level 100 at some point if i were to have taken this card up to 25 percent I would be at 100, but if I didn't take this at all, I'd be at 75, right? Like, uh, so, you know, it can be quite the difference, especially in the long term. It's a nice item. Uh, sometimes you get these rare cards come up, like house items. This one is very good because it allows you, if you care about dark orations, I guess. Um, it's a very unique card, but it allows you to 
get more um, like things that you can populate your house with, right? So if you're going for that top house score and you're that type of player, this is the card that you want to get. And then lastly, we have gathering, and gathering is a pretty obvious one. You know, gathering stuff faster is great, but I would like you to think about the area in which you're gathering, uh, because like let's say it's wind's word for me like yeah i can get things like iron and hemp and stuff here but i cannot get orichalcum i cannot get uh, or maybe not much at all uh you know i can't get some of the higher level materials and that's probably where i'm going to be spending most of my gathering time in the late game so committing to this type of card means that you plan to farm in that area um, so getting a few points of any card can be great because there's always what's called diminishing returns, which just means the more you pick something, the less effective it's going to be. Like you see a lot of that in this game with stats and with um, armor and all kinds of stuff. Uh, so when I pick this card at first, like we picked that other property tax one, it's 5%. Then it'll be like 3 or 4% or something, 4 point something percent, and then it'll go down to 3, then 2, and it gets worse and worse the more you keep picking that card. So, you know, splashing it around a little bit, spreading, like, okay, it didn't take me that long to get this gathering speed, could be a decent thing to do. So I'll choose house items and we'll see how that scales um, if it comes up again. So again, we have another section here. This is identical to the previous section, so this is going to prove my point. Um, we took property tax last time for 5%. It now is only going to go up to 9.3, so that means it's a 4.3, so we lost 0.7% in value if we were to take this again. So we can go ahead and do that um, and see how that goes a little bit further. So this one is the card that you definitely always want to take. No matter what, if you ever see storage, just grab it. Just get storage. <laughs> It's definitely uh, the best card in the game, hands down. It's going to increase your storage by 25 every time. And every single time I see this card, I pick it. Doesn't matter what's on the board, right? I just pick this card. Uh, faction tokens are interesting. I would not recommend to pick them again in a zone like Windsward because when you're farming faction missions, um, they scale based off of the level of the zone. So a Windsward faction mission will give like 300 faction tokens. Whereas if I were to go up to Great Cleave or something, I would then get about 750 faction tokens per mission. So it's literally double. So taking faction cards in a low level territory is just not ideal at all. Um, so here obviously we take storage because it's just the best. Uh, and then we had crafting again on the side, which is a good card, but again, consider your options. Uh, so once again, these are all the same. As you can see, this is scaling up to 13.3. I believe it was 9.3 or 9 .3 last time. Uh, sorry, scaling up to 13.1. So once again, we went down in percentage in which it gained. So we'll take it again just for video's sake to get the clarity on it. Um, and then as you can see, the card is kind of mixed up now. Um, so we don't have that same options that we have had before. Now we have choices between a few different things. So we'll check the further scaling on this 25% territory gain, and we'll go ahead and upgrade that and see where it goes. Uh, again, same choice, and I think you kind of get the gist here, so we'll go ahead and finish this out. I'm going to grab uh, trading tax here, as a lot of auction stuff goes on in Windsward, and I can show that to you actually right now. Um, so I'll pop up to the little board here, and I'll show you what we're making uh, for owning this territory and Windsward ended up being the most popular town in our city as I predicted in my other videos because we set the taxes right here all to the lowest this is dirt cheap and so you can see we made 88,000 gold and most of that comes from trading right here right so trading tax is a pretty valuable card because a lot of it's going to be going on we have a lot of crafters here as you can see we almost crafted a hundred thousand items we refined uh what is this number three million resources and it did make a decent chunk of gold but it's not anywhere near what trading tax is so hopefully that'll give you an idea there's zero property tax so far because it takes seven days for the property tax to kick in and the bait the uh, open beta was not up long enough so we'll never see that but that could be an interesting number especially if people are not taking property tax cards um actually i don't know if it works like that i wonder if it gives me the full or you know the company the full amount but the card just reduces the cost of the player i wonder how that works I'm I don't think we'll ever know that unless Amazon confirms something, so we'll go ahead and uh, check that maybe a little bit later. Uh, but going back into the cards, 
I will say that, um, you know, we look in these other areas, like let's say I look at Brightwood this time. I know Brightwood is a mid-level zone, and it might have some decent stuff like uh, different resources that are higher level. So that may want to change my options. So uh, once again, storage, always a great card. Now I have to think, am I trading in Brightwood? Probably not. No one trades in Brightwood. It's just, it's not a thing people do. They trade in the starting towns. They may end up trading in Requater as like the end game town or something like that. But we'll have to see how that all plays out. But I do do some crafting in Brightwood because I get some of the town boards there and I have to craft some things in that area. I also own a house in Brightwood, so I could consider property tax there so that might be a good card for me so you need to like strategically think ahead so that you avoid wasting these cards i would say and you can just kind of calculate that out based on identifying what you're going to do in each zone so here i do own a tax or a uh, house so i'll go ahead and take tax this time and again we're going to check out the other options like this faction token card it's now a little better in this zone because Brightwood has faction missions that are really close. They're like right here on the map. Oh wait, maybe right here. And uh, it's not very far from town and it does give like 600 plus faction things. So you could consider taking faction tokens in this area. That might be something that you might want. Um, some of the other stuff could be considered as well. So we'll take faction tokens just to see how it goes. And, and then again, you know, you see this is the small step. It's housing items by five because I took one previously. Uh, so that'll scale up. So we'll just finish this out and take a few other cards. And then from there, we'll just go ahead and look at um, different zones, right? Um, so when we talk about the early zones, that's going to be Monarchs, Windsward, Everfall, and First Light. All of these zones are great places to take trading tax, uh, crafting, because they're most likely going to be your stations that have these type of like things going on with them. When you look at zones where you may want gathering speed, in my opinion, that might be Ebon Scale, because you can get Orichalcum and some other things here. That would definitely be Morningdale, because you can get Silk here and Wire Fiber and a bunch of other good stuff. And then Reekwater has a bunch of different um, high-level resources as well. So these high-level zones, uh, Gathering Speed may be a bit of a better card. Faction Tokens could be a bit of a better card. Uh, some different options like that. So each place is different. That's pretty much the TLDR. Think about what you want to do in that area. What are you going to be doing in that area? And who controls it too? Uh, because if I control both Brightwood and Windsward, that's going to change the way I think about my cards. And that may change over time, but if if it looks like your faction is for sure kind of like dominating a certain area and they got it unlock, like you can count on that guild to defend their territory, like we've seen in this uh, beta. Like even on this server, Valhalla, like a super sweaty PvP server, you can still count on some people to lock their stuff down, right? And if you can do that with confidence, then you can for sure kind of place your cards strategically. And don't be afraid to hold your cards too. Um, actually, it just dawned on me. There's one card that we didn't talk about, and I think that's experience. I'm trying to see if I can find it, but uh, we'll definitely discuss that here. Um, just so real quick before it ends. And there's also this uh, house ownership card, which you just have to take at 10. I, f I forgot about that one too. Uh, but I'm just going to take... Oh, here we go. Experience. So, experience. Now, this is the one noob trap card. So, like, I'll end with the noob trap card. Experience is great until you hit level 60. And then it's absolutely worthless. Because you cannot gain experience at level 60 right <laughs> so until the game expands and whatever burning sand comes out you're going to be doing nothing with this card and yes it may help you level up a little bit but the odds of and the reality of leveling is that you don't really spend a lot of time in one particular zone you kind of do but you kind of migrate up so like for me i started in wind's word and I ended up traveling around a lot and doing town boards from different towns. And then I migrated to Brightwood. And I started doing faction missions and quests in Brightwood. And then I moved up into Great Cleave once I got uh, the ability to do that. And I started doing missions and uh, faction missions in the Great Cleave spot that I talked about in my other video. And, and so you're going to progress through these zones. And eventually you're going to hit 60. And once you do, 
Like, that's it. It's all done, right? So that's what you want to just consider is don't fall for the noob trap of XP. Like, it seems good right now, but unless you're going for world first experience or level 60, it's really not going to matter in the long term. So so try to take things that will be useful to you once you hit that end game. That's my biggest uh, point of advice. So dodge the trap card. Think about your other cards as and pick them based on what you are doing in the area. And so think about that long term. What are you going to be doing in that area? Identify the resources. Identify where you want your houses. And then pick your cards accordingly. I hope this helps uh, clear up a little bit of uh, territory card confusion. And if you did find it helpful, make sure to subscribe, like, and hit the bell uh, down below. As any support will go a long way. Once again, thank you for watching, and we will catch you in the next video, everyone.